गुड आफ्टरनून सर एम आई ऑर्डर बोल Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Azad Ali. I'm the director for admission at the Chindil School of Public Health and Human Development. This is one of the latest school added added to the OP Jindal Global University, started in 2009. Today, uh, we have invited Professor Dr. Nandita Bhan, who will be uh, joining us shortly and start her introduction session. Before that, I just wanted to welcome you all. to the uh, to the the to the second lecture of our series uh, uh, for all those students who are looking for a career in the public health so the, this is the second uh, especially curated lecture uh, for our students in the public health sector so today's session is going to be on the the theme of and the topic of uh, today's session is introduction to the social determinants of the health and i request professor nandita bhan to join and uh, introduce herself in detail uh good afternoon all of you thanks for giving up your afternoon nap for this uh, this session uh i know it's a saturday and uh, a lazy day but we are hoping to make this session we we're hoping that we'll make the session interactive and uh fun for for you in addition to being uh, quite informative uh give me a second i'm just going to share my screen uh and share the slides one second okay hopefully you can see them all yes okay great so just to start with uh my name is nandita bhan i'm professor and vice dean at the jindal school of public health and human development uh op jindal global university I think I've met a couple of you before but just to make sure that we are well acquainted uh you know as we start a bit about my own background I'm a social epidemiologist by training I came into public health from social sciences and uh in sort of you know uh, doing a field project actually ignited in a sense my passion for public health particularly reproductive health and gender and uh, so on I am very excited to hear your own stories of being in public health and how and why you decided to uh, join and you know take on this course and I I'm I'm hopeful that we will get acquainted and learn a lot about each other um my training has been uh, both in India and in the UK and the US so after my early education in India I went to university college london where i did my masters and i was at harvard university uh, where i did my phd um following my phd i decided that uh, honestly uh, i wanted to be in india and i moved back in 2013 i think the idea was that all of that i was studying and you know uh, examining in terms of public health and the needs of public health seemed a lot more relevant uh to the indian context to the south asian context and i wanted to be uh in this energy and to help sort of at least try to solve some of the problems of health and healthcare uh and development in india so that was kind of my motivation to move back um my work is such uh as you might you might have read a little bit or not but it has been uh focused on a couple of areas the first has been uh looking at uh you know gender and health uh essentially looking at you know women's empowerment and determinants around women's empowerment and how they impact uh both sexual and reproductive health uh and access in india as you know india has made rapid strides in looking at issues of maternal mortality and so on but also beyond that looking at you know women's empowerment as a whole looking at look uh, you know uh, women sort of economic empowerment uh, particularly of interest to me is the issue of violence against women and uh, you know so on so that has been one sector of my work the other part of my work has been focused on looking at health inequalities i'm going to introduce a little bit of that in this session to you and it's this idea that it's not just uh, individual factors but also contextual determinants that affect our health so it's 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 looking at uh, urbanization it's looking at the way we engage with our environment and it's looking at the interactions that people have with their health systems that affect their health so we're going to sort of talk uh, through that uh 
I'm going to stop for a minute, but what I would love is if uh, each of you could uh, sort of just introduce yourselves uh, briefly and just tell me a little bit about your background and your training. And uh, yeah, just so we know, like I have a better sense of sort of the, uh, you know, diversity of disciplines that you come from. So uh, I, I, we can go in any order, but please unmute and please introduce yourselves. Um, anyone, I think. Okay, a brief introduction will help us to help Professor Bhan to understand. Anyone can go first. Yeah. If... Good evening, ma'am. I am uh, Vatsila and uh, I have done my graduation in bachelor's in dental surgery. And uh, I have uh, uh, actually... Um, I have worked with uh, the corporate sector also, that is Globe Dental. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to organize camps and uh, there I realized that, uh, you know, um, oral health awareness is uh, pretty less in India. I mean, people mm -hmm. are not aware about uh, oral health and hygiene. So uh, uh, fr that, from that point, you know, uh, the motivation came that I can pursue a master's in public health where, you know, I can uh, motivate and, uh, you know, spread awareness uh, about oral hygiene even more better. So um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. No, that's great. That's great. Um, I think I think we have a couple of uh, dental sort of public health, sort of dentists and, uh, you know, uh, students who are coming from, uh, you know, dentistry background. And I think, uh, I think you rightly said we have... Uh, a very limited understanding of uh, oral health. And I think it has particular relevance for the work that India needs to do for tobacco control and interventions around, uh, you know, oral cancer. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Anyone else? Gupala, Gupal. Good evening, ma'am. Yes. Bye. My name is Barao Bansi. I'm from Kerala. I have just finished my graduation in English, language and literature from Atmas University. And uh, I, I chose uh, public, my, my, my objective after getting graduation was to do something meaningful. Then I go through the uh, curriculum and aspects of public health. I could find that the, some of the objectives of the public health uh, were, are to improve the uh, wellness of people of the population. So I thought if I uh, can pursue this goal, then I could uh, be a part of the development of the population. That was my main motivation, even though I do not have a medical background. So yeah. That's okay. I didn't have a medical background either. So, but here I am. So it's, it's totally fine. Uh, very excited to have you on. Thank you, ma'am. You want to go ahead? Well, namaste, sir. Uh, so namaste, ma'am. Uh, I am an Ayurvedic bachelor, so I was uh, into my this public health because I wanted to start something of my own, which is like uh, like an organization, uh, and which is actually uh, to promote Ayurveda and Ayurvedic uh, way of living and health through that. Uh, so that's what I was planning for. I thought MDH would be a greater, uh, it would give me a better exposure towards the, the side of it. So, yeah. I think, uh, I think a public health degree will give you, uh, I mean, obviously you are well trained in Ayurveda and the medicinal system, but I think a public health training can really enable you to think about you know, how populations think, what are the preferences, what do communities want and how can health systems address them better? So I, I think it's a, yeah, it's a smart decision. <laughs> okay, welcome. I still feel like we have two, three more students. Yeah, Satrupa, you wanna go ahead? Uh, 
Yes, sir. Tell me. Go ahead for an introduction, a brief introduction. Okay, so uh, good evening, ma'am. I'm Shatarupa. Hi. I'll be I'll be completing my graduation this year. I'm uh, I'm doing my graduation in sociology honors. So you know, like um, it's always has been my thing to you know. I always wanted to go for MSW, but then actually I changed my perspective because I saw that there are many inequalities in the public health sector and the needy and the poor people are the ones who get the most affected for this. Mm -hmm. So I basically wanted to work for that cause. So that is the reason why I chose public health. I gave it more importance than M MSW. No, that, that's a that's a good choice, I think. And MSW training is definitely uh, very exciting as well. But yes, I think a public is. health a public health degree will give you maybe more in-depth insight into looking at health health issues and health. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, right. thank you. Great. Wonderful. Uh, do we want to do... Right. Are we, are we we'll done? Introduction and then we'll go ahead. Who's the Zoom user? What is the name? Okay, anyway. Um, okay, so maybe I can start because I know we yes, are yes, short yes, on yes. time. Please so, go ahead. Please go so, ahead. This, so this session, uh, what we're going to do, I mean, obviously, I think when you come into the MPH, uh, each of these uh, sections and whatever you're being introduced to here will become a full-fledged sort of course. You'll be, you'll be doing full courses on this uh, or at least on some of my slides. I think all I want to do today is just give you a flavor of some of the concepts uh, in public health and how they affect how we think about social determinants of health. I think many of you come, so what we're gonna do in this session today is brief introduction, which we've done. We're going to talk about, you know, how this, this whole concept of social determinants of health really goes back to, I mean, as far back as, you know, 1948, when we started defining what is health or what is public health. So it's really not something a lot of people feel like, oh, this is something new, but it's actually not. When you look at fundamentally the definition of what is health and what is public health, you realize that you're really talking about not just looking at health systems or the medical perspective, but you're looking at fundamental determinants at the social level that affect our population. So we're going to briefly touch upon, you know, what is health? What is public health? Uh, after that, I think I just want to briefly introduce you to a big sort of conceptual aspect. So uh, I think you'll kind of go through this a lot more, not just in my class uh, in the very first year, but in other classes where you'll start to think about uh, what what do we mean when we say health inequalities and what does it what does it mean when we say health inequities so what is really what are we really talking about and how what how, what do those de definitions really mean and finally we're going to talk about you know when we start looking at social determinants what are the kinds of things we're really talking about you know exactly what do we mean like what are those determinants of health and what might be some types of interventions that help and I, I i again like this 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 is a course that probably uh you know you would do for a whole term so all i want to do is just give you a flavor of some things and the rest of it i think we'll come to when we start the program um all right so we're done with the introduction okay so what is health and what is public health so I think many of you might be familiar with this definition of health, and I think the WHO stated it quite uh, quite clearly and quite eloquently in 1948 when they said health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. What this means, and do note that there has been in this definition there has been the emphasis on physical, which I think many of you in your medical training may have often talked about. Mental, mental health has become a very, very uh, important and talked about subject and something that I think in today's time we all care about. And I think there is a very urgent need to understand the depth 
of, uh, you know, mental health issues in India, as well as what might be some interventions. I think many of many, I think traditionally, people have always thought about, well, if there are any mental health problems, you have to seek help, you have to seek counseling. But how does public health address those issues? So I think that is really been the need of the hour as to how to think about mental health interventions. But this definition of health is not just talking about, uh, you know, the body and the brain. It's also talking about what is the social sort of, uh, what are the social aspects that affect health? So we're talking about, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's also about that. And then finally, uh, something that the definition stresses about is not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So our being healthy doesn't mean that we are not sick. It's So we have to stop stressing about that aspect of disease and really think about what we mean by well-being. I think as you all know that in India, life expectancy has been rapidly rising. One of you, I think, is from Kerala. And Kerala has a state that's a, bit, a little bit ahead of the other states in thinking about longevity. So how do we create social systems, how do we create health systems that enhance the well-being aspect, not just look at, you know, what is the disease burden. So that's really been where some of the ideas of social determinants of health and where they have come from. So when we, when we say, okay, so what is public health? Again, I think people have often referred it to well, public health is the science of protecting and improving the health of populations and communities. And by which I think traditionally, you know, this is the traditional conceptualization of this has been, it's about detecting, preventing and responding to infectious diseases. As you know, the infectious disease burden in India has fallen, but it's still pretty high. And the second one has been about promoting healthy lifestyles. But it's not just about that, right? Like public health has to be beyond that. And that is what the social determinants of health approach emphasize. So of course, it is about detecting, preventing, and responding to infectious diseases. And it's about promoting healthy lifestyles, talking about nutrition, public, you know, physical activity, and so on. But it's also about many other things. So it's about understanding and responding to social inequalities that affect health and well-being. It's about identifying risk factors in an individual's environment that are affecting health. It's about examining issues and factors in the health systems and interactions with the communities. And it's about assessing health and public policy determinants that affect health. So just to recap, so when we're talking about public health, we're not just looking at sort of the diseases, but we're talking about social inequalities. So you're well aware that India is a country, not just India, I think social inequalities exist everywhere. There is a class difference, there are differences by, when we talk about health inequalities, you'll find that there are differences by race, there are inequalities uh, based on caste, based on religion. There are a lot of factors that affect health. And a lot of times public health systems have to be responsive to that. You'd think that they would consider these inequalities as something that's neutral, but that's not the case. They would look at uh, health as is delivered to the most marginal, to the most vulnerable. And that is what a real public health system, a strong public health system is geared about. Secondly, it's about identifying risk factors in an individual's environment that are affecting health. And here, where we're thinking about environment, I think the traditional conceptualization has been the physical environment, what we all talk about these days as climate, as environment, and so on. But it's also factors in, a, in, in an individual's social environment. Sorry, one second. So it's about really identifying what are the risks in that environment that are affecting health. So it could be, for example, uh, built environment. So, uh, for example, cities where we live in have almost uh, well, have public transport systems, but are those public transport systems available to our population? Or are sedentary lifestyles that are coming from lack of physical activity or the kinds of food that we have exposure to based on where we live, what are those risks and how are they affecting, let's say, our risk of getting diabetes or chronic diseases? So, so on. Third is looking at issues and factors in the health system and interactions with communities. 
I think many of you are doctors and are familiar with the fact that India's health system is a, is a pretty diverse uh, set of providers. So we have the public health system, which is divided into three, three sort of tiers. But you also have a range of private health providers. Some of them are big, like corporate hospitals. Some of these are small. Some of these are even maybe illegal or of lower quality. So there are there's a there's a wide range of available health providers. And so really understanding why someone accesses or why communities access a type of you know a provider or the type of provider is it about lack of resources is it about being heard by a doctor so the interactions with communities becomes very important when we talk about you know the social determinants of health so for i think one of you for example comes from uh, you know the traditional medicinal background so there is there is a very strong appeal for traditional systems because these are very much inherent in our cultural sort of mindset and the ethos that we have grown up with. So there is a lot more acceptance of these methods. So really understanding what are the dynamics that you know, lead to people's preferences. And finally, something that has become more and more important is looking at what are the policy determinants. So we always think about, well, your health is a function of what you do, but it's not just that. Your health is a function of uh, where you live, which state you're in, what kinds of health policies you have, what national health policies are available, uh, how much a government subsidizes certain things. So I think when you come to JGU and maybe study health economics, you will uh, have an understanding of budgetary systems. So you will have an understanding of how do you know how are budgetary decisions made? And finances is one of the biggest constraints that sort of helps you, that sort of limits us in being able to spend the way we want to. So it really understanding how government subsidies, government taxes, how do they affect health? So there are a number of these aspects that you uh, can engage with if you are thinking about public health and not just sort of a disease focused perspective. Please do stop me and please do ask a question if there's a confusion or if I'm going a little bit faster. So I just try to identify a range of, you know, problems that studying public health can include. So what all can you what all can you study? Like what is the landscape of looking at issues when you're studying public health? So well, uh, if you're interested in infectious diseases, so one option is to study diarrheal diseases among children and to understand, you know, how uh, they are, you know, linked to people's resources and health systems and water systems and so on. I think many in public health are also very, very excited by uh, studying vaccination coverage. So we have a very, very large and perhaps one of the largest vaccination delivery programs in the world. But it's also a program that sometimes can be uh, stretched by the resources and by the delivery and by supply chain issues. So as a public health professional, I think you can definitely go on if you're interested in immunization, look at not just the health aspect, but also the delivery and the supply chain aspect, which seems a bit more management focused, but it's still very much part of studying health systems. I think if you're interested in non-communicable diseases, I think one of the like one of the emerging questions in India has been the rapid and uh, you know almost overwhelming and confusing uh, you know rise in non-communicable diseases. I don't think we fully understand what are the issues, but we do understand that there have been significant changes in the social landscape, and some of these factors and some of these behaviors are actually leading to more sort of uh, you know, rates of cancer, diabetes, NCDs, and so on. Um, then if you're interested in studying natural disasters, unfortunately, we are speaking on a day where there has been a very big sort of, uh, you know, train accident. But, but really, I think, uh, you know, uh, I think one of the one of the topics that a lot of public health professionals have studied are interested in studying is what are the short medium and long term effects of these kinds of disasters on health, on cognitive development, on children, and so on. So Gopal gas tragedy has been one issue that's been studied a lot. Um, if you're thinking about looking at pandemics, then I think we're just 
kind of living through one or hopefully this has ended, but we don't know. But I think there's a lot that we still need to understand about the COVID COVID-19 pandemic, how it affected, uh, you know, what were sort of the rates, what, you know, how, how did it affect our health? And at the same time, we do have uh, spikes of infectious disease pandemics, bird flu, and so on that affect. And how do these affect the economics of a community? How do these affect the social life of a community? What happens when these pandemics or when these small epidemics happen and how do communities respond to that? So that is a question that I think we can study within social determinants of health. Then as someone who uh, lives in North India, I think we are definitely affected by a range of, I mean, I think uh, maybe, maybe this is Maybe this is a pan India problem, but particularly I think air pollution has been one issue that has been a particularly critical one and something that affects uh, children in particular and how they are growing up. So I feel like there has been an increase in the number of research studies on looking at air pollution on health. So and finally, I'm going to talk about two issues that particularly interest me. Um, the first one is understanding violence against women. I think we are at a point where India has, and like many other countries, a prob like a you know violence against women is a very is a problem that is kind of a behavioral problem, but it's also a normative problem. So we have a much as as NFHS etc. will show you, we have pretty high rates of acceptance of violence. So how do we work to change those attitudes related to violence against women? Um, the second one is, as mental health is grow, uh, is, uh, mental health issues are growing. Uh, I think data from uh, you know big studies like Global Burden of Disease show that India particularly has substantially high rates of suicides among young people. Now, why do we have that? What are some factors? Are these factors related to gender? For example, are these related to, you know, the conditions that women often face in their home or work environment? Are these related to distress, economic distress? Like, what are the factors? Is it really, like, how do we design interventions for these issues? So, you know, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the inter interconnections between public health and human development. So I think traditionally public health was designed as a degree and as a course that was largely geared towards, you know, medical schools. So as some of you might be familiar, in India, public health was often limited to preventive and social medicine departments. And a la largely the focus was still on you know germ theory in, in the sense that looking at biological determinants of health but two global events have changed uh, in a remarkable way in the last two decades the way countries approach health the first one uh, has been the Commission on Macroeconomics and Health. This was like way back, but really the commission was the first time that brought together many countries to think about why we need to invest in health, what are some issues of health financing. And I think you will hear a lot of this word, universal health coverage. What does that mean? Like how to unpack that? Like today we have a lot more, a uh, lot more understanding of UHC, what it means, how, and what are some models by which we can enable UHC for our populations. But the beginning of this happened in 2001. The second, the second global event that happened was the WHO Commission on Social Determinants of Health. So this followed the Macroeconomic Commission. And so Macroeconomic Commission stressed a lot about economic development. The Social Determinants of Health Commission really talked about the concept of justice, the concept of inequalities. And it really talked about this one term that became a huge buzzword, which is social gradient, which really means that as your as your socioeconomic level uh, increases or decreases, you almost see a dose response relationship between your economic sort of status and your health conditions. And this socioeconomic uh, condition or status was measured by social class. It was measured by caste. It was measured by a lot of different determinants. But really talking about why we need to think about the social conditions uh, that affect you know, health and well-being in a more systematic way and from a social justice perspective. Okay. Um, so 
what has changed, I think, and this is this has been one of the progress that we have made in our discipline and particularly something that we embrace a lot in our program in the MPH, is that we think that public health is a matter of right. And it's something that you can't just talk about health as affecting one part of or one stage in life, but it's something that affects you through the lifespan. So when you think about a public health training, you think about aspects that affect in utero. So this is before you were even born when you're in, in your mother's womb. So, so what are some of the risk factors that affect you uh, even before you're born? So basically your mother's environment and uh, some of the risks, risk exposures, how do they affect your health? Looking at infancy and childhood, what are some exposures? What are some enablers that affect your health? But also looking at adulthood, older adults and aging. So really looking at public health through the lifespan and thinking about the fact that one aspect of your life, something that you may have encountered, let's say like an exposure that you may have encountered in childhood can go on to affect your health in old age. So there are, at least in epidemiology, I think now we're moving towards more and more models and also uh, statistical models that help you in understanding the different pathways and how they affect health. But this is something very much part of the MPH program and should be that we think about public health as something that affects through the lifespan. And the second one, and this is the segue that I will take to talking about health inequalities, I think most countries today believe and measure health inequalities, and that has very much been part of the agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals, as you might be familiar with. But before we kind of move to health inequalities, I just quickly want to uh, bring to your attention uh, the term epidemiology. I think most of you are familiar with it, but just to sort of bring you all to the sort of uh, the common platform is really it's the study of the distribution so it can be frequency and patterns and determinants of health related states and events in specific population epidemiology which you're going to study uh, as a foundation in the very first first year is uh, is a field that is critical to studying public health and without it I think there is no way that any public health professional can function uh, epidemiology is data driven and it's quantitative, so it's not very mathematical, but it still requires a little bit of sort of basic quantitative assessment. But what is really unique is that we're not just talking when you're looking at data, you're not just looking at individual data, but you're also thinking about ecological data. So you're thinking about uh, what do what is the data that I have at the neighborhood level? So, for example, you might be able to get some kind of aggregate measure, percentage poverty or something at your neighborhood level or your city level. What is the data at the state level? So sometimes you can get indicators that are at the state level. So percentage of women who, you know, percentage of child marriage, you know, and so on. And what are some indicators that you can get at the country and global level? So what epidemiology really helps you do is, uh, is a very fundamental distinction. That is what makes public health public health is that it distinguishes between sick individuals and sick population. So for example, uh, if you go to a doctor, like essentially they are treating the patient. But if you go to a public health professional, they are really talking about what affects the community or what affects a population. They're not, they're not seeing a patient and saying, you know, how, what is going on with this person? You're thinking about what is happening with this whole population. Even if there are subdivisions within the population, you're still thinking about what's happening in this community. What are some of the dynamics that are going on that are leading to this? So you're not thinking about one person, you're thinking about a whole community. So now what we're gonna do is very, very briefly, I wanna introduce you to one very fundamental distinction and it's a little conceptual between health inequalities and health inequities. Uh, so essentially health inequalities, when we say health inequalities, we are not making any kind of moral judgment. Health inequalities are just differences in health of individuals or groups that are measurable. There is no moral judgment. So if you see something and you see a difference, you'll say health inequalities. But health inequity 
is where you say that, well, I see a difference and this difference is preventable or unnecessary. This difference is unjust. So for example, if you say, um, I see a difference in the rates of, uh, you know, uh, any health condition between, let's say, uh, rich and poor people. Let's say you see that, uh, you know, the uh, you know individuals in the lowest income uh, quintile, you know, the top, like the lowest 25, uh, 20% are suffering from massive rates of undernutrition. And you see that uh, individuals in the highest are actually, on the other hand, uh, they are overweight. So you start talking about what are the issues of equity? Like, how is it that we have this level of food insecurity in India, that some populations have almost nothing to eat, and some populations are almost overweight? So what is going? So when you start talking about equity, you're really bringing in a social justice perspective. You're really saying that this difference that I see in society, this, these differences are due to some underlying structural factors. These are either due to gender inequalities or for example, in countries like the US and UK, a lot of times the distinctions are based on race. So between African-Americans and you know, other populations. So what are these inequities and what can we do about them? So throughout this program, I think you will focus a lot on understanding inequities, health inequities. And I think almost in every class, um, somehow the discussion will kind of come back to this concept. And it's very important to understand the distinction. So one easy example that I can think of and that gets used a lot in the class is that, I mean, Let's look at the first one is the reality where, you know, one person has a lot and the other person has very little, which is unfortunately how most societies are structured. But if we start talking about a panel two, which is equality, inequality, everybody has got a bench based like an equal bench. So irrespective of where they start from, they are all getting the same bench, you know, the same width in a sense. So unfortunately, for somebody who is, you know, who is at the lowest end of the spectrum, getting this equal is not enough. It's not enough to bump this person up to be able to see this game, you know. But but this person who is at the highest end, the tallest person, he doesn't need the same as the lowest person. So when, when you have interventions that are entirely based on equality, sometimes you cannot fix an underlying social structural issue. But when you start talking about equity, you realize that what you need to make sure is so that everybody can see the game. So you know that the fence is a certain level and you know that maybe the tallest person doesn't need, this is panel three, the tallest person doesn't need a bench at all. But the, but the person who is the shortest, maybe he needs two instead of one to be able to reach that. So that is where, where we talk about equity. That is where we talk about, you know, this whole concept that we need to intervene based on what are the available resources that populations have. And finally, of course, from a justice perspective, you don't need the fence at all. Like we wish in society is they, that didn't have a fence. And so all none of them would need these kinds of social interventions. But the truth is that we are often looking between panel one, two, and three. We've, we're almost never at panel four. So that is really the distinction. And I think you will cover this. And uh, there are a lot of in interesting internet examples that look at this distinction and try to explain this in various meaningful ways. So we're going to do a lot of it in class. And you'll probably see the same graph in some of the classes as well. So finally, I want to uh, just sort of wrap up with a couple of things. So what are some uh, determinants to think about and plan interventions? So last year, you know, in my class, when I started to uh, brainstorm with students as to what they think are some interventions, we did this like word cloud activity. And these were some of the ideas that came up. So we were talking about, you know, what, what are some interventions and how should we study? And I just asked them to think about what were key concepts, keywords that they thought about that would uh, that are part of studying social determinants of health and that help in you know intervening 
So our students came up with things like communities or awareness, inclusion, development, discrimination, society, race, you know, all of these things. And then they also started to brainstorm about what might be some techniques and some institutions that might help solve it. So they started brainstorming about NGOs, corporates, governments, talking about frameworks, talking about therapy, talking about organizations. So there's a lot that we uh, that, that gets covered when we start thinking about where to intervene. But unfortunately, and so and so some of the frameworks, like this is the framework from the Commission on Social Determinants of Health, it sort of splits uh, determinants into two types. The first is on the left-hand side that you see, which is the structural determinants of health. So these are determinants um, at the sort of macro or policy level. These require, you know, higher level intervention, interventions by governments. So things like governance, macroeconomic policy, so uh, helping um, through taxation. Uh, labor market, social policies, public policies, interventions in education, and so on, and cultural sort of dimension. So these were sort of the structural de determinants that needed much higher level of intervention. And, uh, you know, intervening on that, on that level could actually influence a lot at the ground level. Uh, then within that, I think, uh, this at least framework talks about, you know, social economic, social, socioeconomic position. So idea of, you know, your class, your ethnicity, your gender, your education impacts how you respond sometimes to social determinants. So having an intervention that is about uh, awareness or maybe, maybe, you know, the, the populations who are more educated might might take up those interventions quicker or might adapt quicker as compared to perhaps people who have less education. But the commission also talked about the intermediary determinants of health. So these are, these are determinants where we do see a lot of actual interventions in the field. So we do see behavioral interventions, uh, be it around tobacco control, changing diet and so on. We do see material intervention, so cash transfer programs that enable, you know, working conditions, vouchers, uh, food availability, so especially in times of distress. We also see psychosocial interventions, which are around social support for populations who are suffering from, you know, different diseases. So determinants are often kind of split into two. But really, when we talk about determinants, I think there are a range of factors that people study. So, for example, we study poverty, income and social protection. So talking about how does affordability affect health? You talk about education and think about how does awareness affect like our uptake of any kind of positive health behavior? You talk about work conditions, uh, issues of migrants, occupational health, you know, what are some interventions at the workplace that can enable maybe, uh, you know, happier, happier employees. We talk about food insecurity. So something like midday meal program. Can midday meal program uh, enhance the participation, particularly I think in India where we are concerned about girl child schooling, can midday meal programs enhance the participation of girls? Uh, interventions at the housing level for basic amenities, for the environment, early childhood development. So there are a whole lot of them that we study and also affordable healthcare service. We know that this is a major issue and a major barrier for our healthcare access. So one thing, one determinant that, uh, you know, before I, I close, one determinant that we study in great detail uh, in my class is also discrimination. I think discrimination is something that uh, a lot of us have faced uh, in one way or the other. So I think it's it's really like you people may have you know faced ageism, discrimination by age, gender, uh, caste, class, and nationality. If you talk about global, but like really, how how does discrimination manifest? Does it manifest as you know in physical ways, in in access to various services or to programs? Does it manifest in terms of, uh, you know, inter interaction? So in terms of feeling persecuted or feeling a sense of stress from not being seen as part of the group? And how does it impact, you know, your access to services? So I think one of the things that we talk about a lot is 
particularly discrimination within the health system, and we're going to talk about it in, in terms of, you know, health workers, uh, has been like, how, how do health workers, how are they recruited? Um, and how, how, how does that, how does their experience of being in the health workforce play out? And, uh, you know, also communities, how do communities get, um, you know, medical care? And, and are there issues of discrimination that communities themselves feel in that? So discrimination, what we talk about is, uh, is the unfair or prejudice, uh, you know, it's prejudice related to, you know, uh, race, gender, age, or even now, I think we talk more and more about sexual orientation, it's a very important issue. And we're really talking about rights, we're talking about people's very strongly held beliefs. And we understand that discrimination affects communities access to health, but they also, I think, increasingly, we're studying this, it affects mental health. Um, finally, one thing that you will have, not my course, but like another full course on, I think, uh, in the MPH is this question of universal health coverage. I think this is very, very important, but we realize that um, India, like most countries, uh, does may or may, like it's, it's trying to innovate and think about what might be some models of reaching that. So this is a cube that I think gets studied a lot. It's uh, it's the UHC cube where we talk about well, when we're talking about health services, you know, who is covered, what services are covered, and what is the financial protection. In the sense that obviously, who is covered and what services are covered is simple enough, but it's also, but the health system is also about affordability. And so, how is one intervention within the social de determinants of health is also to have a health system that listens to you, that is affordable, that is, um, you know, accepting of your beliefs and so on and, and engages with you respectfully. So this is another thing that we will study uh, in the course. So I want to stop here and I want to say that for the rest, we will uh, see you in class. I'm happy to take some questions. I don't know if I've uh, overwhelmed you with some of these ideas and some of the concepts, but I'm, I'm hoping that you'll be excited by these and, uh, you know, we will get to have much more deeper and uh, dialogue on many of these questions in our classes. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop here. Azad, uh, over to you. Yes, thank you, uh, Professor Nandita. A wonderful interaction we were looking forward to. So um, all those who are still here, uh, you may like to interact with Professor Randita to understand how your experience is going to be. Any question that comes to your mind, feel free to ask for another five minutes. We are still here. Please don't be shy. I think there'll be a lot of a uh, lot of chance to have a lot of debates in class and so on. But don't be shy if you <laughs> have any early thoughts yes. or some of these things if you've studied them before. So anything comes to my, your mind that you want to talk to me regarding anything, or we have already concluded so many. We have answered so many things in the last session here. So. Um, Next week, we will not have any session because of the summer vacations are just starting uh, from uh, Monday onwards and the faculties will be back thereafter, maybe after 15th of June. Uh, so we can host another uh, interactive session with the another professor and we'll share with you the topics accordingly. I'm sure these topics will help you to understand it is a basically an ice breaking session between you and the professors who are going to teach you and giving you some basic idea of, because the kind of diversity we have, we are expecting in the classroom. It's too much, no? The people are from the different sector, different part of the country, some international students as well. So uh, you look forward to uh, interact with the professors and uh, be acquainted with them. And so your, you know, your first week is going to be the wonderful in the in the in the in the university. So that is one of the objective. And very soon we are coming up with the uh, pre-semester uh, engagement planning. Uh, we will share the details in due time. That will also uh, help you to do uh, interaction with each other in terms of you can interact with all other fellow students during that uh, uh, five to seven days. Uh, a program that we are going to work on it and we'll share the details very soon.
Great. I think uh, people are very familiar with Jindal School of Public Health and because we are continuously ta uh, talking to and uh, taking their queries. So wonderful interaction, wonderful session by you, uh, Professor Nandita, and uh, hope to have some more session in the future. And uh, Balagopal, Mukta, Samvej, Shatrupa, Vatsala, feel free to connect with me in case of any uh, doubt comes to your mind. All right. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, I request the IT team to uh, stop broadcasting the session on the YouTube and um, then stop recording. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend ahead. Thank you. And yeah, see you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, ma'am. Great. Ajay, can you just stop broadcasting? Ajay, are you there?